The new AI humanoid Darwin 01 just hit factory floors with a foldable torso, 28 motors, hot swappable tools, and a self-charging, self-replacing battery system that, in theory, lets it operate endlessly without human intervention. Gumate showed up at a metro station, casually switching from four-wheel to two-wheel mode to climb stairs and answer passenger questions. Then Sapphire, Pepsi's brand new humanoid spokesperson, started guiding shoppers with real-time speech and gestures, fully certified to operate across the United States, Europe, and Asia. And while all that was happening, MagicBot pulled off live multi-robot coordination, kicked a football into the top corner, and helped launch the biggest humanoid robot competition to date. This was not a product tease, this was a full-on rollout, so let's talk about it. Let's start with Darwin01 from Standard Robots in Shenzhen. It kind of looks like a slim robot torso riding around on a set of smart wheels, almost like a futuristic skateboard. But here's what makes it special. Those wheels are omnidirectional, which means it can move in any direction, and fast. It zips through tight warehouse aisles faster than most human workers, over two meters per second, which is basically a fast walking speed or a light jog. Even though it looks small, its upper body hides 28 individual motors that let the arms bend, rotate, reach into awkward spaces, and even fold back if it needs to get under something low. And when it comes to lifting things, it can handle up to 10 kilograms, which is more than enough, for most of the small parts, tools, and boxes used in factories and production lines. What really makes it useful is how flexible it is on the job. The wrist is designed to quickly swap out different tools, so one moment it can be using a gripper to grab small boxes, and the next it can switch to a suction cup to lift lighter plastic bags. The robot constantly updates how it moves and grabs things using a mix of sensors, laser scanners, depth cameras, and even radar, all working together to help it understand the space around it. This allows it to avoid bumping into things like wires or walls and figure out exactly what it's looking at and how to interact with it. It moves around on its own, but if needed, a human operator can take over remotely using a virtual reality headset and control it in real time through a fifth generation network. The connection is super fast with barely any delay, which is important for situations where the robot needs to do really precise movements like placing something inside a tight space. The power system also got an upgrade. When it runs low on battery, it can either quickly charge itself at a docking station, or if you go for the more advanced version, it can automatically swap its battery using a special drawer system. And when they say it can run for 12 hours, that's not just a guess. They actually tested it with a full shift. Eight hours of work moving items, followed by four more hours doing quality checks. It ran the entire time without issues, and they published the test results. But the thing that really puts Darwin ahead of older robots with wheels is how easily it fits into existing systems. It can connect directly to the same factory software used to run other machines, like manufacturing execution systems and warehouse management platforms. That means it can receive tasks just like any other robot on the floor. It also connects to the same network that controls other mobile robots, so it can work alongside them, hand off items, or even ride on top of an automated cart if something heavier comes through. And the company keeps showing off the foldable torso, and for good reason, it's not just a gimmick. The spine of the robot can actually fold down so its head stays below the height of older overhead rails and beams still used in many factories. And even while folded, the robot stays stable, adjusts its center of gravity, and keeps moving at full speed. It is one of those smart little design decisions that only comes from people who have actually worked in real factory environments. Behind every smart robot, there needs to be smart data, and that's where Deep Agent does the thinking for you. Abacus AI just gave Deep Agent a serious upgrade, and now it's easily one of the most powerful tools for data analysis out there. With just a single prompt, you can now generate rich interactive dashboards packed with detailed charts, dynamic filters, and even fully functional 3D plots. And this isn't just visual flair. These 3D graphs actually help reveal patterns and insights you'd normally miss in your typical 2D charts. You can spin them, zoom in, apply filters, Basically, interact with your data on a whole new level. Deep Agent now does real research. It reads PDFs, spreadsheets, and documents, pulls key info, and turns it into clear dashboards. Whether it's competitor analysis, financials, or customer churn, it handles everything automatically. 
Just describe what you need and it builds the visuals for you, no manual setup. The dashboards are fully interactive, totally dynamic, and ready to be shared or even deployed as standalone apps on your own domain. It turns raw data into something you can actually act on. This is real AI-powered analytics. And honestly, it feels like a major shift in how we'll work with data going forward. All right, now back to China. Slide west across the Pearl River Delta and you bump into Guangzhou, where GAC Group's GoMate is pulling a very different trick. It can scoot like a quad-wheeled rover or pop up to walk on two wheels when the terrain narrows. Yes, two wheels, not legs. Think Segway balance, but stretched into a five foot nine inch humanoid silhouette. In four wheeled mode, the machine is four foot seven inches tall, ideal for seeing over waist high barriers without blocking commuters. Metro staff at Zingangyong Station have already been using it for security and passenger questions. It rolls up a short flight of stairs, flips into bipedal mode, and keeps patrolling the platform without missing a beat. The entire act hinges on 38 degrees of freedom in the joints and a ridiculously stiff body shell that hides GAC's own all solid state battery pack. Solid state means higher energy density, but here the real win is safety. No flammable liquid electrolyte and a respectable six hour window between charges. The company claims their dual mode locomotion cuts total energy draw by more than 80% compared with classic servo driven legged robots and the math checks out when you look at the torque curves. Less current spike equals longer life for the cells, which is handy because GoMate is not staying in the lab. X Automotive Lines plan to press it into inspection duty this quarter. A production robot crawling underneath a chassis, scanning welds, then popping up to read a barcode on the dash seems mundane, but doing that autonomously every 90 seconds is massive throughput. The roadmap is equally aggressive. Pilot programs across multiple industries before the end of 2025, small volume runs in 2026, and full mass production beyond that. What fascinates investors is the worldview shift inside Chinese auto brands. BYD posted graduate job ads zeroing in on humanoid robotics, and Li Auto's chief executive officer straight up said there is a 100% chance they will dive in. The logic is simple. Cars already pack batteries, motors, and drive units, so the supply chain for humanoids is sitting right on the assembly line. If a metro station trial proves GoMate can cut security headcount or let a single supervisor manage multiple robots remotely, every provincial subway operator will place an order. On the healthcare side, the same balance system that keeps GoMate steady on a moving escalator translates nicely to hospital corridors where stretchers, Intravenous poles and visitors collide in ways floor plan, computer-aided design cannot predict. Add the fact that GAC solid state cells recharge fast and you realize a graveyard shift nurse could rely on a robot courier that never complains, never calls in sick, and docks itself at four in the morning for a 40 minute top up. Now while Darwin and GoMate chase industrial paychecks, PepsiCo's Chinese marketing team decided robots can also sling soda. They partnered with Jiuyuan Robotics to rebadge an AggieBot A2 as the PepsiCo Sapphire. And yes, the bot rocks the blue and silver livery alongside a backlit logo on the chest. The underlying hardware stands 1.7 meters tall, tips the scales at 69 kilograms, and runs a multimodal large model that fuses speech, vision, and gesture inputs on the fly. In practice, that means a kiosk in a supermarket can ask the humanoid where the zero sugar cans are, the robot points the way, and then cracks a dad joke in near real-time latency. The crucial bit here is certification. Agibot A2 just became the first humanoid to rack up China CR, European Union CE medical device, European Union CE radio equipment, and United States FCC badges simultaneously. That trio of regions covers almost every supply chain PepsiCo pushes product through, so Sapphire can legally demo in a Guangzhou hypermarket on Monday and fly to a Barcelona trade show on Wednesday without customs seizures. But I am wondering, when Pepsi makes a robot its brand ambassador, does that mean humans officially suck at being human? <laughs> All right, now certs usually sound boring, but they make a real dent in the rollout curve. Analysts keep framing 2025 as the kickoff for mass production humanoids and the numbers floating around are wild, anywhere from four to 10 million units shipped annually by 2035, 
When your robot already satisfies radio, medical device, and general safety directives, the sales guys stop worrying about paperwork and start arguing about stock keeping unit count. Z-Wen's engineers also plugged in a customizable knowledge base. A regional brand manager can dump store layouts, promo stock keeping units, and local slang into the robot overnight. Next morning, Sapphire not only knows that three choose one is a three for one bundle, but also which end cap the bundle lives on. PepsiCo execs claim the bot will bleed into digital social campaigns. And honestly, that makes sense. Why drop an influencer fee when your own machine can wave at a phone and chain into a WeChat mini program? Rounding out the week is a name you may have missed unless you track Shanghai's tech scene, Magic Labs Magic Bot. A single unit is solid, but the real party trick is that they already got a small swarm of these humanoids collaborating last December. Think of three or four identical bodies sharing sensor data so one can pass a box to another without human timing cues. At the Gangjiang Embodied Intelligence Conference, the crew staged a live relay. One robot lifted a bumper-sized part off a pallet, passed it to a second unit on a slope, and a third slotted it onto a demo chassis. Crowd went loud, not because of the lift weight, industrial arms do that every day, but because the robots choreographed in real life with no external motion capture. MagicBot is not locked to factories either. Showrooms, malls, and even tourist hotspots are booking trial units as human-sized guides. The software stack lets the bot switch from pointing out horsepower figures at a car dealership to explaining dynasty artifacts in a museum in about the time it takes to sync a new dialogue pack. And that adaptability dovetails with Zhang Zhang Robotics Valley's master plan. Attract 50 key component players by 2027, build a full parts-to-platform ecosystem, and then light up service deployment citywide. The developer competition hosted more than 60 teams tackling tasks like barcode scanning, rubbish pickup, and battery hot swaps. And one of the crowd pleasers was a magic bot penalty kicking demo. Seeing a humanoid backstep, angle its frame, and slot a foam football top corner is equal parts technical flex and marketing gold. The organizers want that vibe because they need investors who normally fund apps to realize hardware is finally nimble enough to iterate fast. The whole place buzzed with that post proof of concept energy. Basically, nobody is arguing whether humanoids can do the job, only how quickly they will displace legacy gear. So the question is, if a robot can now deliver packages, patrol subways, sell you soda and play football, how long before one marries your sister and files taxes better than you? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do not forget to subscribe, hit like if you found this wild, and thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.